Howdy ho! It's time to play some Kielo again. Trying to put my setup right. <clears throat> so, welcome. As always, we are going to play at Micro Gaming. Our crowdfunded bankroll is just short of $600, so we are going to start with Kielo 20 tables. Let's see how it goes. There are around one, two, three, four, five tables only open, so we will see if we stick to PLO 20 or do we change to PLO 10 or PLO 50 at some point. I have no idea what kind of tables these are, so there's only five tables open. I'm going to open pretty much all of those and then we will see how it's like. Here's one player sitting out, so it's four maps. Strange. Quite funny because sometimes at micro gaming there's a lot of action on Friday evenings and then sometimes there's pretty dead and quiet. And my computer is having a Friday too. Everything works really slowly. Let's make them a bit bigger. I'm just going to follow it. So it's three maps. So that table died too. Man. PO50 is one option, but then when you have 12 buy-ins, then it's going to be a bit optimistic or very really aggressive bankroll management. And the idea is to increase that bankroll without too much variance, so going to PO50 is going to be a bit, a bit too variance heavy so we might go down to PL then first let me change my filters oops <clears throat> something happened. Um, 20 cents with pretty crappy hand. I mean, we have to call and see if we hit anything. We have to pay 20 cents in the bottom of 90 cents and now he checks. So I'm going to stab this turn. Oh, the river bears the poor so It kind of sucks. One of his hands he might call the turn, he's going to bluff against the river, so when the river bears, I'm going to give up. 8-9, so he would have wanted the river, but that's probably the bottom of his range. Now there's a lot of... Or uh, there's only three tables open in PLO 10. Wow! Who killed the action? I don't know. But we have Pokemon Mania's chat open. We have Twitch chat open. Everything is open. Feel free to use them. I know there's ice hockey championships going on. Some of the Finnish viewers are watching Finnish versus Belarus. But that game is over already. So let's try to open some PLO 10 tables too. Strange. <laughs> but we will manage. If you have any Topics 
that you want to discuss or hear me talking about today, feel free to propose them or any questions about PL or poker or if you have well anything that's related to poker just make some noise in the chat it's always fun more fun to do the PLO night when there's active people in the chat saying something and remember these live coachings are probably one of the few opportunities to have totally free coaching on the internet you can ask anything that is in your mind and i can answer you we can create discussion and we can interact for free And nothing that interesting has happened. Uh, let's see, where do we let's sit in this one as we don't have a lot of action going on. Um, I'm going to call this turn bet, and if he bets, I'm. It's so hard. Well, he's going to call with aces. He's going to call with queens. But I would think that on demo three, most of his range is some kind of ace queen type of hands. So I'm going to make a thin value bet half a pot if he has a flush or worse tricks if he raises then i'm just happy to fall i don't see him check raising the river although when i don't see that the flop i don't represent much and i don't think portion is ever going to check raise the river without the better full house Now we just wait until we have the fourth table open. Oh, now it comes. Woo if there's any problems in the quality of the stream, just let me know. And we have four tables open in PLO 20. Nice. Mm -hmm. And none of the opponents is a known good customer. That sucks. One reason that might affect is that one of the micro gamings skins where there's a lot of Finnish players actually moved to Unibet. I'm not sure how many players actually went to Unibet with that change or transfer but I would say that at least some so some of the Finnish players moved play in Unibet so that might affect when there's world championships that might affect I hope it's a, it's a temporary and this is not a permanent change in traffic <laughs> And now we have an outside table of PL10. I'm going to keep it open here. For a while. So we will have one table outside where well there's same same reckoners. Now my cat is invading the table. Let's see if we can get him to webcam. And 
nothing happens. Just a couple of steps towards If we even get the value, no, we didn't. I put the call on table four. And this is kind of board where we have a cut shot, but it's a board where we can float our opponent. Of course, we don't have information. He's super short, so it's not that great of an idea. But I'm going to check here. And we make the nuts on the turn. Uh, plan is that if the turn is diamonds and he checks, then I can stab. Or if I didn't have the straight, I would stab the turn. And now on the river, not much value in betting. So I'm just going to check. And he had pocket aces. 2 7. Too bad the river was pretty bad. <laughs> wow, the Santos guy made his first three bet with Rapid Rainbow Rundown. <laughs> we need to make a note out of that. And is in direct, he's a pretty aggressive guy, and Santa Carbo is raising a thorn. I'm going to mark him as an aggressive player. Isidore is opening trash. Santa Cuervo is three betting trash. And post of they just check, check, check. On table one, where there's two aggressive players raising each other, it kind of ties up our options. We just have to wait for premium hands and then enter the pot and see if we hit anything. And variance is quite high, but variance, but if we hit something, we can triple up often with nice equity. <laughs> Now there's a lot of, lot of dead moments, nothing's happening on the tables. Let's see if we can mark any hands today that we can use poker choose three view or do I forget it once again. Table four is kind of crappy one. There's one, two, three regulars, one really shorty and one neat. Not much going on there. Let's see our lobbies. There's one, two, three, four. Now there's five below 20 tables, so I'm going to 
get on the waiting list and see if we can change table four. Oh, we hit the straight flush. That's nice. And we do have action. So now the question is do we want to bet? I'm going to bet. So either we're going to get any action from sets and high flushes. And I hope he has a set because now we can step him off. And it's my bit. And he called, did he have a king high flush? Whoa, he had a set of fives. Didn't raise us even. Well, if he doesn't raise the river or bet the, bet the river himself, he doesn't have the odds on the turn to call if we have a flush. And there were two, we have top two. I'm definitely bad bit here to protect our hand. And we kind of hope everyone folds, or if they call, we hit something or river goes chap chap. And now I'm just going to bed. I don't think. Either one of these is going to bluff the river, so we're going to get called my bluff catchers or some weakish hunch. Now we have another table, so I'm going to change the table four. So we didn't get any action, they both had a draws. There's also an argument that Basti might have been able to raise the river if he had a missed draw. Um, I'm just going to fold aces here when 38 and 0 decides to bet the flop. On average, I don't think he's going to do that with just the air. Well, what's up? Table 4 isn't any better. Table one, we have rep one, rep one, we have two aggressive, we're going to stick with that. Table two, we have some high VPI beer price. Table four, we have two high VPI beer price, so I'm going to stick with those. Next week we're going to have, oh not the next week, week after next week, we're going to have the Poker Armenia's second annual meeting here in Finland. If any of you is interested to join, just put a message on the forum or send PM to Dea. I'm sure we will find a way to get you here. and have full accommodation. The outside table in PLO 10, we are up 46 BBs, quite nice. And on PLO 20 tables, we just wait and wait and wait. Table four is kind kind of bad again.
next way is this the same table that we just left? Yeah. It kind of sucks that you cannot go into waiting list for a specific table. And I'm sitting out on every time. I'm going to open the table so I can see when there's spot open. No, it's not that. So both of the tables are quite bad. Ah, don't go there. So pretty bad tables, some good tables and some really bad ones. Kind of sucks. Now, when Poker Stars and Full Tilt are combining their player pools, it means that Poker Stars traffic is even better compared to any anyone else. And in PLO, the problem is that although the rate back is often better on these smaller sites and average opponent is worse. But then when the traffic is like this, then you have four tables open on PL20 and two of them are crappy ones, two of them are good ones. Then it's really hard to get off a lot of volume. Because I, I would think that sitting on the table with five regulars, especially tight ones, I'm not sure if you can beat the rate. Even with rate back, you're going to pay around 10 BPs per 100 hands. So you have to be over 10 BPs per 100 hands better than your opponents. Here we're going to make one third of C bet. Um, I don't think stacking is going crazy. If he calls or raises, he has a hand that and he raises, so I'm quite sure he has a chap. So I'm just going to put, of course, if I have a chap, I'm going to make the same C bed anyway. On table two, I'm calling with some equity and the possibility to float. Now when he puts the turn, I think he often has some kind of value hand. So I'm just going to give up. On the outside table, we have a pit spot. We open from the bottom and we type layer three bet, but flop is a three seven. And we don't have anything, so nothing we can do. But I'm quite sure the opponent's range is really, really ace heavy. And we didn't have pocket pair, we had queen, eight, six, four, and in position, so it's plus EV for us to go. Here, something funny happening. Uh, 
type player three bits, playing type player four bits. These should be different B aces and Basque shoves. So there's not enough aces for everyone. So interesting to see. This guy probably doesn't have aces. Yeah, he doesn't. And they have aces versus aces. Oh, Basque has. I don't. I don't understand this. I don't understand why he shoves, why he enters the four-way pot. Uh, of course, if he thinks that Suan has aces and Stapki has aces, then he has small equity edge. So I can understand him shoving. Yeah. And out the top up doesn't work once again on PLO then. On PL10 table, we lost those 5 euros when we had a flush versus flush. Wow, table three is becoming bad. We have only one fish who's under 50 BB shorty. Table one is definitely nice. We have these two really aggressive ones. I don't know if we have played any hand in that table. So we have some interesting situations going on and then some super boring ones. But he seems to be pretty aggressive. So at least we have aggressive opponents. Often, especially for beginning players, those very really aggressive opponents create most problems. So now we have that situation in two of the tables, and we are the lucky ones to have positioning them. And now Basti decides to play for stacks with really strange hands, but I'm going to mark him as aggressive too. And here on level three, the fish had a runner runner flush. We have nuts on table one. And now we just have to think how to stack Santa Clairo. Or is it Huervo? Huervo. Um, just make a standard C web. I, I don't want to do anything funny. Because if I bet small, it might be suspicious. I don't know what are his tendencies, where he likes to attack what he thinks is a weakness, so I'm just sticking out with standard bed sizings until we can see something to exploit. Now we have a lot of aces. Now we hit the nuts on level one. Again, 
Let's see if we have any action. While the oppressive layers are shutting down, uh, we have one call. And I'm sticking up in betting. I think 5-4 is quite unlikely or 6-5 for him. He has a lot of weaker made hands. He has flush draws. And now it's decent card for him to bluff. So I'm going to make small short of blocker bet and hope he raises. At least I give him a chance. So I think that most of his range is air, so it's really hard to get any values from him. On table 3, we get it in versus Knupas with 78%. Wasn't enough. And here he didn't bet the flop, so I represent the flush. I have the cut shot here to back me up, and now I have two pairs. And it's enough to win. He had worse two pairs. On table four, we just call and we hit the top pair and 13 other nut wrap on rainbow board. Nice spot to check raise. Because if he folds over per, he's going to fold a ton of equity. So we put the money in and he has he has the straight. And we make the higher one. Nice. Oh we were actually ahead. This is so funny that he had the nuts on the flop and we were 51% favorite without any flush draws. We had just the straight draw. Also in PLO. I once made a competition in, in a forum that you can find the spot where in heads up both flopped nuts has the worst equity versus a draw. So you need to have a nuts on the other player on the flop and the other one needs to have a just a draw and it have like the same same straight and redraws just a draw. And what is the worst equity that the nuts can have? <laughs> I was a bit amazed when the worst equity is around 20%. So if you flop the nuts straight and the board is right, there's a flush draw and the opponent has the exact hand, you can have 80% equity with the draw versus the nuts. And that is sick. That's why people say that especially 200 BPs deep, if you just flop the bear not straight, don't go crazy. You're asking me to check back. Let's see the turn. On the outside table on the PLO 10, we get it in. Oh. On a three bet pot, we hit the pair and the wrap. Uh, I mean, pair and open ender, and the opponent has flush draw and bitter wrap, so we were kind of crushed. Yeah, we had only 36%, but when we decide to semi-bluff, oh, he had a trick queens. Uh, when we decide to semi-bluff, then if we have 36% equity, it's enough. If we have over 50%, we can value raise. And when we have 36, if we have any folding equity versus the opponent range, then 36 versus his opponent range is just fine. Nuts on table three. Against two opponents, 
Let's see if they have anything. No. No one is attacking our seabeds. Santo is picking up the chips with trashy hands. Uh, I'm going to fold ace king queen seven with the queen high flush drops. We have two very aggressive players. So I, I like to have hands that is going to hit as many nuts as possible. Interesting hand on table one, and he is going. To, he fought with the cut shot. Wow, insane! On the outside table, we lost seven euros. Mr. Regular, we got the flop with the cut shot and plan to float some turns. And we hit the nuts on the turn and open and bet. And I decided to crawl just with the nuts and hope the river is kind of blank and he fires his bluffs. But River paired the board and he bet really small is one third of the pot. And I decided to call with my nuts straight and he had the flop bottom set. Oh, 90 cents was my plan to raise here on table two. We kind of missed the flop, but he is an aggressive, so I'm going to check back. And if he bets the turn, I'm going to call the turn. Now, just go to showdown. And he bets the river. Well, I have over pair, I'm going to call this one. And he had a set this time. But I think he's going to fire a lot of rivers. Kind of tempt to raise here. Let's make a stab. And he folds. <laughs> 
So I think his range is a lot wider than any A's and any queen. And when we raise that, we have to be right under half of the time. On table four, now we have the set and an open ender. And we have that many outs to the nuts, so that we have to call this one. And queen is a blank, and I don't think he's ever folding a straight to a backdoor flush draw. No, he had just blockers, wow. I'm going to make a note out of that one. If I can. Oh man. I hate making notes when there's a lot of going on. Fire. Fires. Turn with just blockers to double flustro board. On the outside table, we are making a bluff on the river on medium sized pot, and opponent is thinking, which is not a good sign. All the draws missed, and the board pairs on the river, and now he's thinking, and he check raises as well. So he had a slow plate. That's one of those situations when slow plane set on the flop pays off. Of course, flop goes check, then on the turn we bluff, he just goes and river we bet, he raises, he gets some value. But I don't like the idea of doing that versus unknowns. So you're hoping that the opponent is making a double barrel bluff instead of just betting the Turn yourself and get value from the worst hands. <laughs> the aggressive player left on table two, so it's kind of bad. And there's three more of these PL20 tables. So I'm going to close the PL10. There's just regulars. Not good. And on table one, the aggressive players keep on making big pots with crappy hands and splitting all the pots. Sick. Mm -hmm. uh, such a small bet that I don't think this is a value bet when he bets one third of a pot, unless it's some really, really clever. 
raise. And we make the simple knots on the turn. So let's see if he has ace then. No, he has 10 9. And we split the pot. Now we finish the eye on table 2. Let's see what kind of player he is. On <laughs> double four, we hit the middle set, and then completes eight nine. It's part of his range, but he has a lot of flush draws in his range too. Five kind of sucks, because now all those touch of type of hands hits and he checks. I don't think there's any value in betting anymore. So I'm going to check behind, and he has five, five, seven, nine. So yeah, so he had a cut shot and he pulled the turn with the cut shot. So I'm going to mark him as a good customer. Pocket kings, and we kind of missed the flop, but we want to make a C bet, make our life a lot easier. We have folding equity, and the diamond has folded 100% to C bet so far. So, definitely, betting is better option than just giving up. And now, let's see if we can pro the showdown. No, he bets half, but uh, it looks really, really, really like a bluff here. When it's half a pot bet in the 350, if he had 8 9, he would protect it versus the straight. So I'm quite sure he has the flush. Uh, I mean, flush draw. But I, I would like to have some equity to make a bluff raise here. But really tempting to raise. The thing is that he's going to call, and then I hope the flush doesn't complete. So it's it's kind of hoping a lot of things. And when I have some equity myself, two pairs or the flush draw myself, then it increases my total value. And now with just air, I'm not sure sure how profitable it actually is. Because he's going to hit the flush one out of five times. And then I have to hope he doesn't have the straight or he doesn't have a set and he bluff catch the river. Because that has happened a lot of times there. When I have a straight, I check raise the turn or bet the turn he calls. And on the river, he has just a set and I bet again. And people just decide to call one more bet with the set or two pairs.
An interesting situation, number one, we have a really, really weak hand. But if Santo bets, I don't think he's going to bet one of two pair hands. So if he bets, it's kind of this type of hand, small pair or just a draw. So if he had bet the river, I'm thinking about going with the jack there a lot. Because when he bets the river, when the backdoor straight comes, it polarizes his range in my mind. Of course, if I see him betting middle two bears there on the river, then I make a note because it really changes how I estimate his range on the river. I often make notes out of situations or when someone plays the hand in a way that doesn't fit their profile or is in some other way kind of a strange way, it's not the standard line, when I always make a note. Because it affects how I construct the range for my opponent. On the outside table, we have a situation we isolate three, but our opponent on ace high board, we see that we have the rundown too, which is nice back up. And he just folds as expected. And then we have aces on the very next hand. Let's see what happens. And we get a sixth, sixth table. And there's the same aggressive. Is it correct? Table two kind of bad running down. Um, I'm going to make a bet on the river because it looks a lot like bluff. So if he has any two pairs, any sets, he might bluff catch on the river. Because we didn't bet the turn, we shouldn't have a flush that often. Yeah, Claudius just came back watching super tight, awesome Finland versus Belarus. Super match. <laughs> Stream is working. I'm not going to steal rolling station is blind with crappy hands. On outside table we set mine and hit the top set. And board is queen then five rainbow. The problem is that pretty much everything over six completes a straight, so I'm just going to check raise the flop. And we get some action that show the table. Oh, we have money in from Izzy Durek, who has green jack six. Let's see if we can hold up. No, we can. He makes runner runner straight. 75% is not enough three way. <laughs> nice. So at least we put the money in in a really nice shape. Too bad it didn't hold up. We're making a lot of money in EV.
So that's pretty much what you do versus a pristine player. You wait until you hit, and when you put the money in, I hope it holds up. Now we have the nuts on the very next hand. Probably don't get any action because flop was checked through. Uh, if he has ace, we can know we didn't hit any action as expected, but have to bet the turn in case someone has an ace to get two streets of value. Oh, that super tight match between Finland and Belarus was 6 to 2. I watched the start of the game pretty much first two periods or when and half. It wasn't really tight one. Secret for the profitable nicknames. I don't know. My nicknames are always profitable and I haven't seen anyone else making profit on the tables. <laughs> uh, it's actually funny. Of course, you don't have a lot of sample size, but when you get a few thousand hands from opponents, then you check how they are doing, and often they are not making money. But then, if the sample size is 2,000 hands, then win rate of 10 BBs per 100 hand means that they should be up to buy-ins. So if they lose one flip 200 BB deep, then it might be that they are in that 2,000 hand sample, they are losing players. Well, in reality, they might be huge winners. But what I have seen from most regulars that I have a lot of hands, not many of them are making profit. And now he decides to bet the river. That is super, super strange, but why bet pot? But it looks so much like a buff. He might value bet the straight. Uh, I'm going to peel this one off. And he had total air as expected. On the outside table, it was similar situation. Port wasn't paired and we made the small straight on the river. Port was 8, 5, 6. four dues or something. And we had ace three, we had an ace to five straight and the opponent made a pot size bet on the river. It was actually four way pot. But flop close check, turn close check, river we make the small straight and he pots uh, and I call and he uh, had just the ace five or pair of fives. Uh, often in the PLO innings, in almost every evening, what happens is that I make some river bluff caps that are not super standard. Oh, that A sucks. I make some river calls that are not super standard. And I try to explain why I make those calls. But then again, if you don't really get, oh, we had the quads on level one, it sucks because we don't get any action. Have to small play this one. I try to explain why I made the call, but if you don't quite follow why I made it, just say something so I can explain. Because sometimes they are quite thin. 
and it might be that I don't explain it very well. So if you have any doubts that you don't really get my reasoning, just say it so I can then use poker juice. I'm going to see back this on table too, quite close. And then I'm going to check back the turn. And if he bets the river, then I would assume it's often a value bet or it's half a bet once again. I'm actually going to raise here. Yep. Let's see what happens. Oh, he shoves, so he had a queen then. So at least I'm going to make a note of his bet sizing. Bets have. I hate when I cannot type. Kind of such, there probably is some settings that you can change of oh, run around with two pairs that you can change so that when the table becomes active it doesn't put the focus on that table because it's really pretty painful to write the note when you have six tables or more and constantly your pointer or Whatever this is, where you write, it goes off from the notebox. So I'm going to know that at the diamond made half a pot bet on the river. Uh, it was only a spot where he made half a pot bet, and I thought that that looks like a bluff. Uh, it was a straight board, and I doubted that he had a straight when he bets half a pot. When there's flush draw on the board, he would need to protect more. But now, when we see that he bets half a pot as value, then I would assume that half a pot is his standard bet size, even even making value bets. Um, I'm going to check here versus Marmot and hope he bets river because it's pretty hard to get value if I bet the turn. Ace King is probably hand, but I'm going to get the value on the river anyway. So those just ace type of hands or weaker jacks are kind of hands that I can one bet as value. And he definitely has aces in his range. So I'm just going to call here even with the second nuts. And he had a jack, so this time we missed a lot of value. And they want four, we have a huge draw, we have a wrap, an uh, inside wrap and not flush draw. So we have around 15 nut outs which is huge <laughs> so it's definitely enough to make a bet and we get the money in versus just the king the thing is that even that king has a lot of equity versus us now i missed the equity what was it uh, 55 so at least we were ahead the regular is making funny plays on the outside table flop was 10 8 deuce and flop goes check check and then flop is 5 giving us Bear and a wrap, and we decide to bet an opponent raises. Check raises us with top and bottom two pairs on 10, 8, 5, 2 sport. Wow, that's something that I would not do. But it's nice to see people creating pit pots with small pot hands.
We're going to play around 15 to 20 minutes. Still. We have a double cut shot and a fast rate, it's enough to make me bet for sure. On table four, let's see if our two pairs is good on the river. Seven is kind of a crappy card, it completes almost every straight draw there is, but he had just a queen then. One of the straight draws that doesn't improve. A nice-ish flop. It's one of those flops that if opponent has to have a hand, we hope he has a top set because we have a huge equity, but if he has something like better flush draw, then we are in a really crappy situation. And when he check raises, I don't think he's ever folding. No reason to shove, let's just call. And turn is kind of bad because if he bets, I think we have to fall his reply. He's raising C bets only 6% of the time. So I give him credit for T9 or set and just, just fall. The outside table, some player three bet me and then chips, and he has ace queen queen. Kind of interesting spot. <coughs> Second hand in a row that he three bets me out of position. Uh, he's in position to me. Uh, he's out of position to me, sorry. And he three bets and then chips box, chips turn, chips river. That this time he had ace, king, queen, queen. And our cat is making some noise. Watch out, he's hungry. He keeps that noise all the time. Um, funny thing because Dr. Shop cannot have ACs, Stepping has ACs for sure. Yeah, ACs, ACs, ACs. And if he has ACs, we don't have an equity to call when we have ACs in our hand. So just have to give up. What's funny is that Donkey Shark three bets and then doesn't call. So the only hands that should be three bet folded are some ace king queen type of hands or king queen 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 double suited. Well, even that you have to call. And if you don't have double paired kings, then you shouldn't be three betting in the first place. Yeah. Here, Terras Mies 
opening a lot of hands at the player. Um, he's kind of spot where he definitely needs to see bet. And he's see bet in pretty much his whole range, I would say, because it's ace high board or he should. But the thing is that he has a lot more than aces, so I'm going to call here and let's see if we improve. They are now we don't have to float or make bluffs. But if turn is hard and he decides to check, then we can bluff the hearts. And now he decides to call the turn, which is a bit scary. -ish. Of course, now when the turn is blank, it's it's good for us. Now we just check back and see what he had, and he had jack seven. So lucky for him. But we had decent equity on the turn, I would think. Only 18%. Oh, oh, he was blocking eighth, so we had only nines and tens. <laughs> Bit of unlucky. So, kind of. We were quite fortunate to lost only five dollars there or euros. If I was the opponent, I think he needs to bet the river when he has. Um, I shouldn't have aces a lot of times. I might have ace jack, but I definitely have worse jacks or some bluff catchers. I think he, when he checks, I'm not going to bet the river with any worse hands, so he doesn't get any value by checking. Um, here, Donkey Shark three bet folds once again. Wow. I think unless he just happens to have pocket kings twice. And he three bets and open and decides to four bet. I think that when he three bets and just folds, he is three bet folding too much. Then we hit decent flop, three pairs and open ender. Definitely worth of C betting. And it's me, Jay. We are in position, so let's peel once and see if we can get a cheaper river. Um, now we had a foster too, so we have a lot of options to even call his bit. And there's a chance that he's not having checked in for some reason, which means that. Did we have he might have blockers who knows 10 and 9 so I'm going to get him in instead of giving myself opportunity for the room and he has jack 10 nines oh that sucks we had 31 percent but it sucks because he has 9 7 too so he's blocking a lot of our out so we had only 30 something we have 31 equity and Essentially, we were blocking six possible outs, so that would have been around 15% more. So we, if he didn't block nines and seven, we would have 45 to 47% equity. <laughs> and now we were lucky to split the pot. And I'm giving up versus Santo. He calls the flop on Queen 8A. We block Jacks and Thins for some straight draws. So I think he has some kind of made hand. 
wide open or he's just calling me total air but he folds 64 to see but so I would think that he has a hand when he calls this board. And we made this straight, but flush completes its paired board. And speak, speak. Um, next we um, our finish coaching is not going to happen on Friday. I will not be home for the whole weekend, so it's going to happen on some other day. Not sure what that is yet. And in two weeks when we should have English PLO night, we're going to have the program Minas meeting, as I said before. So we are not going to have it on Friday on that. Either and probably what might happen is that we skip the coaching, the next English coaching, and then transfer it one week further. <laughs> Santo has to have a weak hand because he opens on average of 55%. And he decides to limp because so he, he needs to have a really, really weak hand which means that he's not super race happy, one out of 12 hands, so I'm going to see that. If he was really aggressive racer, I would check back here. We have back to a flustro and we have some straight possibilities with front shot. This is kind of board that is super nice to attack with even air. It's really far, hard, hard for me to have a hand that hits this board. Bana Ananas, Finnish player. We don't quite hit the board. So I'm just going to fold. the tree path from stack in heart of aces we have one ace in our hand so it's really close if we can even call this one he's going to see but a lot of hands oh i'm going to build a flop oh. not quite sure now we have the cut shot. I'm going to call and like nine is nice card. If he checks and we bet, we should have a ton of folding equity. Because he shouldn't have eight, and unless he has something like ace, ace, then eight, or ace, ace, nine, nine type of hand, he's going to call here. But we have a ton of folding equity on the third and nine just hits perfectly type of hands that we will call on the flop. So it was perfect. And here I'm not going to block Santo. 
when I check the flop. And he wins with king high. <laughs> you can keep my blind. So it's 11, um, we're going to end the session soon. Let's see if we don't have anything going on. And then what you are going to call. And we have interesting flop. We have a chap high flush draw, but we have three diamonds and nine is our pivot card. There's so many turns that give us a wrap. And now we have the flush, let's keep the pot small, because we are blocking 10 high flush, 8 high flush, so we are blocking pretty much every hand that we might get value from. And at the diamond, that's half a pot once again, half a pot size. Now I'm going to call once, if he fires the river, then I'm going to fold. Because then I would assume he has a strong hand. And I'm just going to fold. Looks like a high flush a lot. Mean tree, but and I'm going to check back and see if we improve. Oh, we sort of do interesting river because if he bets would he bet well if he has aces he might bet but would he check not sure uh, i'm going to check behind with ace 10 and he had ace king a eight. here on demo two i'm going to check back uh, when he checks i'm going to stab and he calls, and I'm going to continue on the river. Now oh, he had a check high flush. And what happens on table one? We get three bet from Apro, we get four bet from Apro, we get gold call for a four bet. Um, I'm going to check the flop. We have such a huge implied odds. Oh, now we're done. Now we're. <laughs> Uh, we have to pay 17 euros in the pot of 110. So if we had 20% equity free flop, it's enough. And uh, let's see. Oh, do we have the nuts? No, 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 not even close. We then 8, 7, and he decides to stack it in. Wow. Crazy, guys. What was our situation? No, not, not in the tracker yet. No, it doesn't work for some reason. Oh, my tracker is broken. Now it comes. Um, we had 25 free for so it's plus EV. Queen then 8, 7. I don't know why he is stacking off, but that was sick. So, plus EV flip. Didn't quite pay off. Would have been a nice spot. So, 
so now my, actually might be a situation where we have lost two all-ins with huge equity and now we lost uh, we had 150 BB so we are definitely three and a half buy-ins down so it actually might be a situation where our good looking, good looking session is not that profitable because we are here up two buy-ins and then around one buy-in on the other table so it's not enough to cover up for the losses well Let's see if we find another people on table one. Bad flop. Oh, and he shoves, so I'm going to get away. And pocket jacks. Wow. <laughs> pocket jacks versus pocket jacks, and we folded aces. Crazy guys. Uh, I'm going to raise pocket kings. We have ace blocker and on this board let's make a small bet and see what happens. I'm raising the insta claw so I'm away. And they both have eights. On the outside table, let's see if Cryptoman raises us. Uh, it's a three bet pot, and we have got shot open, uh, open, over pair, sorry, cut shot and over pair and back for first. So if he raises, I'm going to step off because he shouldn't have a lot of strong hands on that board. And he just calls, which is strange, it looks like a draw. So on the king turn, we are going to step off. I mean, top of his range is two pairs, and instead we have equity. But he found which is nice. What was, we won 80 BBs. Almost. No, just five and a half euro. Now there's a lot of action going on. <laughs> uh, I'm going to call here, if we didn't have two untouchable, whatever, I, I would have raised, because Santos' range is quite wide. And we have three overcrunch, we have a crunch shot, and he is 50 BBs deep. But when we have two, and I'm going to just call him, because if he raises, then I'm going to fold. And now we make the notch, which is nice, let him do the betting. And then we just get it in. Let's see what he has. He has, wow, ace, queen, then seven, ace, queen, then seven. And uh, what's funny is that. Uh, at the start of the session, we had this easy direct sitting here on the top, and they had a lot of repeat bots. They stacked off in many, many hands, and they had so often a split bot on those three and four bet bots. Both had that kind of hand, both had just 10 7 like cut shot, and both hit them on the turns and reverse. So, wow. I think. Without the speed boards, he would have been losing a ton of money. Well, he is all in access that is minus 33, and he is pretty much lost that much so far. Uh, now we have open ender and two back to flush draws. Uh, I'm going to stab here. 
Because I would assume that if he had a straight, he would bet or with the set or with anything. And I don't think Isidore is going to raise me without anything. And then we make the nuts, which is nice. And now we just extract value. And he folds. So uh, I have a feeling that Isidore is being, of course, he's fault to see, but he's 100. But what my idea about him is that he want, likes to peel flops. But we don't see what's in three bet pots. Uh, now we can raise from Santo and we can get almost all of our step in. So let's just let's take the flip. We don't shy away from the variance. Oh, he folded, which is nice. Uh, that hand is crushing us. Let's see if we can hold up. And we can. Woo! One for the team. And Santa lost. He had over 60 euros at some point. Then he lost it all. When you're playing like maniac like Santo, and if you care about winning money, then if you triple your stack or get more winnings, then you should quit. Because if you keep playing with these stats, eventually you're going to lose. Or another option is that he's having fun at home, made a deposit of some money, and then just decides that I'm going to play as long as I can with this money. I have a couple of friends that are doing that. On Friday evening, they deposit 20 euros and just drink beer and play as long as they can with 10, 20 euros. If they win, they just keep on playing. If they lose, they just go to the bar. And there's nothing wrong in that. Let's see if Terasmias raises me. He has raised his beard boards. Some of them know this time he calls. So let's slow play with the flush. And we don't make the straight flush. So just check and win the pot. And what he had, he had pocket chair. Oh, he had a five. Yeah, makes sense. Um, clock is over 11. And today we are not going to have two hour session. We are going to stop here. I'm going to sit out on the tables. Table three died, so it's good spot to get away. Let's put one table here so we can have some action, and then we can see what is the result. We might be winning, we might, we might be losing, who knows. I have no idea. We lost that 150 BB flip, so that makes me think that we might be actually making losses today, but then we have made some profit on the other table, so interesting to see. No idea. Philip is quite side one. So we pick up the pot. Nice. So that's the graph. Now I know what the results are. Mm. 
going to show you in a while. Do we have a no? It's the last hand here too. So here are the results. 41 dollars in EV adjusted actual winnings three dollars so we made a winning session but didn't run quite well on all ins so nothing we can do about that one uh, three bet is only 2.7 so it's a bit low but what it explains is that we had those really aggressive players and we didn't get a lot of premium hands to free bet them with. And this is quite low. Pretty much 3% ACs and then some isolation hands. Um, graph for today. Well, here it is. This is where we are getting in with 75%. Or was it even more at some point? Here is the 30. Uh, I mean, 150 BB all in, and then we put some back. Yeah. Nice. Graph is looking good when the orange line is growing up to northeast. Then everything is good. And luckily, we didn't end up in here. We got profit, so shareholders win around two dollars or something more but it's better than losing money so thank you all for joining after the super tight hockey match and on the next week we are not going to have coaching on friday we are going to have it on don't know when have to check that one and we after that we are not having coaching on the weekend because we have the meeting but please follow the forum or twitter and whatever social media you have we will inform you as soon as we know now for my part have a nice friday evening have a nice weekend and let's watch the awesome cat video and then do what you want to do thank you for watching feel all night my name was Kubernetes and this was hosted by Portland Rhyme Mediator.